everyone i wanted to take out the time and make this video for you all because i am hoping to get back into making youtube videos consistently again i went on a little break in the middle because university work kicked in and i had a few personal projects lined up that i need to get out of the way and i still have a few more projects lined up uh i'm getting a handful of commissions lately that i had to get out of the way so i haven't necessarily had the time to make all this stuff just yet but i'm hoping to get back into youtube again extremely soon uh, so this is just a start to that hopefully reviving the entire uh, uh, time lapse paintings last speed painting <laughs> playlist that i was making for this place. anyway i wanted to take out the time to make this video and the one thing i want to focus on specifically is style it's the one thing that i've heard so many people specifically talk about in their videos over and over and over again and i basically wanted to make this video for anybody who's just starting out or even for someone who is a little bit more seasoned and i'm no professional but i think i've drawn enough to have uh, some sense of understanding about style and art in general specifically the work that i do that is character design and keyframe illustration i want to get into concept art and i am hoping to get it done through this the painting that I'm doing at the moment is of Adam Brody as The Flash and the late Anton Yelchin as Kid Flash. For those who don't know, there was a cancelled Justice League movie that was supposed to be made in 2009 and these two were cast as The Flash and, the Kid, and Kid Flash, respectively, in the movie. Barry Allen was supposed to die at the end and Wally West was supposed to become the main Flash of the team. So that was something that was extremely exciting to think about. And I specifically made this painting because I just recently got in contact with uh, the director of the documentary for that movie. Anyway, and that is completely besides the point. The point of the video is for you all to see the way I'm painting. I want you all to have a window into the process that I usually follow. I start off by bringing in some references. I look for references, whether it's on Pinterest, Google Images, DeviantArt. I look for references all over the place and I am currently an animation student and they listed a few resources uh, for us to check out when it comes to anatomy, painting and everything. I'll list those down in the description below in case any of you want to check those out uh, where you can basically get uh, references for anatomy, painting and it really, really helps a lot. So what I basically start doing is going ahead and looking for references for the body of the character and I specifically have uh, specifically have an idea in my head about the way I want the image to look and I start off by scribbling out ideas and paper a small piece of paper is all anybody needs when it comes to that uh, I basically start off by doing that and then looking for reference images that are similar to the pose that I have in my mind and then after that is done I go on to look for images of the actor that I have in mind hopefully from the same lighting position that I have the reference picture of the body from. But if not, I've got to figure out a way to uh, see how the lighting works with the body, right? It's easier changing and imagining and trying to draw from memory what and how your body is going to be lit compared to the face, at least for me. Because in my personal experience, it's really hard trying to recreate a face of a specific person and make it look like that person, but change the lighting completely. It's a little hard to do that, but it can be done. It's not like it can't be done. It can be done. It's just it's just an extremely tedious and time-consuming process. But over time, that comes with practice as well. And I haven't reached that stage just yet, but I'm hoping you, me, and whoever is watching this does reach that stage at some point. And I think that at the end of the day is the thing that's going to matter the most. Anyway, so I continue doing that and then I start filling in my flat colors. What I do at the end of the day is also draw a little thumbnail on the side of the painting at the start to just figure out the color keys of the painting. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm going to display that up here very soon, just now. Uh, this is what I specifically do on the side of the image once. And uh, it basically helps me out uh, to see what the image at the end of the day is going to look like when it comes to the colors because thinking in values, thinking in colors, thinking in specifically a handful of colors that essentially make up your entire drawing. For example, this entire painting 
has a specific color scheme blue contrasting with red and yellow right yellow and blue are complementary colors red and green are complementary colors so the background has a bit of both blue and green which makes our characters really really pop the drawing board is fun but what i have more fun with is rendering i like making materials look the way they do in real life it's fun figuring out what somebody's cow is going to look like or how uh, a certain piece of clothing is going to wrap around somebody's hand or their body or uh, how for example the flash's emblem is going to be stuck to his chest in this case but how his belt is going to be covered with is is going to be covered uh, with the seams of his suit all of that is an extremely fun challenge to take up and i think that's the fun part about painting it's it's essentially just problem solving which at the end of the day is an extremely important part of creating a composition that actually looks great so for keyframe painting specifically problem solving is an is an extremely important part because i want you to see the way i'm guiding the eye when it comes to this painting the background itself is in perspective but what i did was i went in and i warped the image up a little bit so the background meshes with the perspective so it's practically slanting up a little bit towards the end which gives it that really really long fast paced perspective which is an extremely important important part of drawing something when it comes to uh, characters showing any sense of movement that is specifically what i did for the background the next thing that i wanted to tackle was the rendering of the painting itself because when it comes to style people render it dif differently like some people have an extremely cartoonish style some people have uh an extremely hyper realistic style even more so than me and just figuring out how you go about seeing those values and colors is the extreme is the is the important part about taking it to the extreme whether it's on the extreme of making it super simple or the extreme of making something look hyper realistic i'm somewhere in the middle i like making my paintings look realistic enough to see what they will look like in the real world but still keeping a sense of fantasy to them i specifically uh, study classical painters uh, rembrandt um for example is the biggest inspiration i have when it comes to painting faces extremely 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 big when it comes to that and i think renaissance paintings are an extremely important uh, part of art history that can be used by anyone who's planning on getting into hyper realistic or semi realistic painting at least studying them is not exactly going to do uh, any harm and then the next suggestion i would have is to study andrew lumis's work every artist that i'm aware of or at least their process that i'm aware of involves a certain amount of there is a certain amount of tailoring that's included but majority of it is just following the way andrew lumis drew heads or bodies figuring out the line of action the gestures of the body the c curves the s curves those things make a painting look as appealing as they can and because i'm an animation student uh, appeal is one of the is one of the 12 basic principles of of animation so just the basic fact that all of the stuff all of these skills all of this knowledge is just so applicable to all the different disciplines in art It makes a huge difference because none of that knowledge is wasted the fact that i'm using the knowledge i get in my animation class for my illustrations or the illustration knowledge that i have is being used in my animations makes a huge huge difference at the end of the day and that is that i think is is the important part when it comes to making illustrations that look real enough appealing enough and reach out to the audience as well the next thing to come to is figuring out how you render these things it took me about 3 days to figure this whole painting out because i just couldn't get batteries mask to look right i just couldn't get it to look right i need, there was just something missing there were parts of the painting where i genuinely thought oh, all right i think it's done now 
over it. I think it's done now. But like every time that happened, I was like, all right, fair enough. There is something missing. And that something will always be missing unless you actually study and practice those materials. For people who do not want to draw in a realistic fashion or in a style that resembles real life a little too much, or even, a, or even remotely, studying these things is important because at the end of the day, it does inform even the most basic of the basic stylized work that you have probably seen. Being an animation student, we study uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, animated movies, ranging all the way from 3D movies made in the modern era all the way back to uh, the old Disney movies. And all of that stuff still applies. Having knowledge of what stuff in real life looks like is a key because you can't exactly stylize something unless you know what it looks like in its actual form and I think that's the best piece of advice I ever got from anybody I for people who don't follow me on Instagram uh, there is a good chunk of my work that was extremely experimental back in the day there was a lot of there were a lot of different styles that I was experimenting with a lot, lot of different styles that I was experimenting with and there were also a lot of obstacles that came with them because I specifically knew how to paint with one style. I was comfortable painting in one style, but to just completely stay away from that, but also have elements of that in that painting became a little uncomfortable. But I believe at the end of the day, that is the entire point of painting. I didn't arrive at the style that I specifically paint with now without doing that. I've done a lot of cartoon work. I've done comics. Comics were where it started for me. I remember when I was three, that was the first time I actually drew something and Batman was the first character that I drew. It looked like absolute crap, but <laughs> it, it paved the way. So comics were the main inspiration for me and I used to draw the same, I, I used to draw my paintings and make them look the way Jim Lee did. I was nowhere close, but I mean, Jim Lee was, one of the main inspirations, Todd McFarlane, all these big comic book giants, Ethan Van Sky, uh, all of them were the big, all of them were basically what I was thinking my style was essentially going to look like. I thought my work would look more like a graphic novel compared to what it looks like now. And I was told this one time, that I should practice real anatomy once and then try and stylize that which is essentially what I'm telling you as well and that might help me but eventually what I found in that was I could make these characters that I fell in love with as a kid and make them look real the same way Alex Ross does right the same way I, Gabriel Del, Del Otto, I think that's that's the that's the that's the one artist that has an extremely similar style uh, to mine, and he basically does a lot of stylized work, but makes it look extremely real as well. Art Chum even, Art, Art, Stanley Lau, he is huge when it comes to this, and that is essentially what I want to do with this video. It's just to inform you all that this is essentially what my style is. This is how I got it. This is the journey that all of us as artists go through and uh, giving you a few pointers in a few directions that perhaps a lot of people don't necessarily seem to hear from others is all I can do uh, with this. And I think 